I've now turned on the uh, counter, which I noted earlier is uh, up in the upper right hand corner here and you may notice that it uh, is measuring the frequency this is once again a hundred kilohertz signal uh, approximately not not a, a frequency standard and then I have enabled uh, measure this button. Over on the left side are the measurements that you can make and you can switch from the horizontal menu to the vertical menu with the menu button. The horizontal button I have pressed the period, the frequency, and the rise time. You can have of course others. They appear down here and these are the auto measurements. Remember earlier, the cursor measurements appeared in a little box in the upper left-hand corner. The uh, auto measurements appear down here. And see if we can get that to focus. There we are. The period, 10 microseconds. Frequency, of course, of that is 100 kilohertz. Uh, and you may notice that jumps around quite a bit compared to the hardware counter in the upper right-hand corner. And the rise time. Now you can select a series of these. If you push one that's already selected, like the frequency, you'll notice that a selected item appears for a brief instant to show you that you already have that one. The reason is you can only have five measurements. So let's add fall time. You see there it appears at the bottom. And then we're going to uh, include pulse width there. Now I'm going to include negative pulse width and you may notice that when I do negative pulse width appears here but over here the period disappears. That is everything slides to the left and only the most recent five buttons that you've pushed uh, appear at the bottom. So that's how the the auto measurement works. Obviously, you can make measurements on the vertical as well. For example, if you want to look at the maximum voltage, that's this top key. And if you look down here, Vmax appears as 3.5, roughly 3.5 volts. Similarly, if you want to look at Vmin, you push that one, and Vmin appears. Once again, everything appears on the right, and all of the measurements to the left slide off. So in other words, you can do five measurements, combination of vertical and horizontal, in the auto mode, and have them displayed at all at the same time. Okay, now let's uh, look at uh, delay and phase measurements. These are two-channel measurements, so you have to specify a source 1 and a source 2. Now the, uh, the Rigol comes up normally with the uh, source 1 being channel 1 and the source 2 or source B being channel 2. I've changed it to channel 3 here once again because I like to use 1 and 3 instead of 1 and 2 or basic comparison measurements to, to help speed up the acquisition rate, but you can use one and two if you want, in which case you may not have to change these when you go to a delay measurement. So as I pointed out, you uh, uh, when you go down to the bottom menu and scroll to the bottom, the uh, menu over here appears, and you select delay. I'll select delay 1 to 3 falling edge. That first one is rising, falling. Phase from 1 to 3 and phase from 1 to 3 once again rising and falling edge. And down here you'll notice that the delay from 1 to 3 is moving around quite a bit and the reason is that uh, the 
scope is not stopped, so it's updating, and the bottom trace is a random pulse width. So I will stop it, and as you may remember from an earlier video, when you stop it to get the trace to synchronize, for some reason you have to change the mode. Once it synchronizes, now you'll notice well you'll notice when it focuses that we're now getting a pretty stable delay of about 960 nanoseconds. No delay from 1 to 3 on the falling edge, and the reason is that if you look at the waveforms, you'll see that the uh, rising edge is here, and there is a delay there. There is not a delay between this falling edge and this signal. They are the same, and that's the reason why uh, you get there. By the way, you can eliminate some of that ambiguity by just changing the, the uh, trace display. Now you see the delay from 1 to 3, the falling edge, is 0. The phase from 1 to 3, rising edge, is about 36 degrees. And the rising edge phase delay is about 380 degrees. I also turned on the duty cycle over here uh, from the other menus. By the way, you notice that the, the uh, two-channel measurements are in this uh, white, whereas the single-channel measurements are in yellow. So that is all I'm going to do on the Rigol uh, uh, measurements section. Now I'm going to switch over and look at Siglet. When I reviewed the uh, immediately preceding section, I realized that I had misread some of these. For example, I think I said that this was the uh, falling phase, it's actually the rising, and this is the falling phase, and I also think I misread the uh, uh, delay from 1 to 3 as 0 uh, microseconds when it's really 3 microseconds. So if uh, any of you caught that, uh, the uh, that's a result of trying to read very small numbers on the camera display instead of straight off the oscilloscope, uh, but uh, I'll try to do a little better in the future.